Kodak Company is happy to bring you America's favorite family, the Nelsons. Ozzie, Harriet, David, and Ricky. They enjoy good times together. And like most of us, they save their good times in pictures, especially at Christmas. Right now in store windows all across the country, you can see signs like this. Kodak suggests a give and take Christmas. Give Kodak gifts for Christmas, take pictures, save the fun, and share your Merry Christmas days with everyone. Give Kodak gifts for Christmas, take all the Christmas cheer, to live again, enjoy again, year after year. Give Kodak gifts for Christmas, take pictures all year through, to give a Kodak gifts, the merriest Christmas thing to do. I'm sure all of us enjoy having Christmas pictures. So this year, why don't you enjoy a give and take Christmas? Give a Kodak gift to those you love so they can take pictures they'll always treasure. It's a good way to make this the happiest holiday season you'll ever remember. And now Kodak invites you to enjoy The Adventures of Ozzie and Harry. How about it, David? I'll be back in a half an hour. Here, I'll even help you. Well, I'm all finished now. You want to borrow my car? Why don't you come out here and give me a hand? Because I want to borrow it, not polish it. Where's your car? Well, they're adjusting the brakes. I only need it for about 20 minutes. I thought you said a half an hour. Okay, a half an hour. Where are you going? I'm supposed to meet Wally down at the malt shop. Why don't you take the bus? Come on, will you? I'll be right back. Okay, go ahead. Thanks. Wait a second. Let me see your license. My what? Your driver's license. I want to make sure it hasn't expired. Otherwise, my insurance is no good. Does that satisfy you? Is that your thumbprint? <laughs> Drive carefully, will you? I don't want any dented fenders. I have a dented fender in years. You better fill it up with gas, too. It's almost empty. <laughs> Hi. Hello there. Hi, Kathy. Hi. You know her? Oh, just well enough to be politely turned down when I ask her for a date. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I can understand why she turned you down, but why wouldn't she want to go out with a handsome, debonair fellow like me? Well, maybe she doesn't like guys who don't have any self-confidence. Do you think that's it? Well, probably. Did you ever ask her again? No, I didn't. A, a handsome, debonair fellow like me gets discouraged easily. Well, what about you? Well, I was thinking of giving it one more try. I think I'll ask her to the dance next Saturday night. Well, you better hurry up. She's leaving. I'll be right back. Hi. Hi, Rick. How's your tooth? My tooth? Yeah, remember a couple weeks ago I, I asked you for a date and you had a toothache? Oh, yes. Well, how is your tooth? Oh, it's better, thanks. Oh, that's good. Seventy-five a dollar. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's been nice talking to you. Bye, Rick. Now, how'd you make out? Well, she didn't seem too interested, so I changed my mind. Well, I kind of figured you were wasting your time. What are you two sports going to have? I'll have a chocolate malt. Yeah, I'll have a banana split. Well, that sounds good. I think I'll have a banana split, too. Two banana splits. You know, I think I'll have a chocolate malt. OK. What happened? Sounds like somebody got a dented fender. Hey, wait a second. Oh, gee, what happened? Well, I was just trying to squeeze out of this parking space, and I backed into this car. Do you know who it belongs to? Well, yeah, it's my brother's. I borrowed it. Oh, that's a shame. I'm awfully sorry. Oh, that's OK. There isn't much damage. I'm sure the insurance will cover it. Oh, it really is a shame. Oh, don't worry about it. Those things happen. Hey, I meant to ask you before, but I didn't get a chance. There's a real nice dance next Saturday night. Would you like to go with me? Well, I'd love to. Oh, that's great. I'm glad that's settled. Well, what about the fender? Oh, don't worry about it. Uh, do you happen to know what insurance company you're with? Well, I'd rather not go through the insurance company, if you don't mind. Well, aren't you insured? Oh, yes, I'm sure we are, but it's my father's car. And, well, you know how it is driving somebody else's car. Oh, yeah, sure. You see, I just got my license, and my father would never let me take the car again if he found out about this accident. Oh. Yeah, I see what you mean. 
Well, there isn't very much damage. Well, whatever it is, I want to pay for it. Oh, no, I couldn't let you do that. No, no, I insist. It's my responsibility, and it's up to me to pay. Oh, no, please. No, 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 I absolutely insist. I won't take no for an answer. It's a matter of principle. Well, okay. Then it's all settled. Good. There's only one thing, though. I don't have any money. Well, let's forget the whole oh, thing. Oh, no, no, of course not. I'll pay for it somehow. Maybe I can earn some money. I'm a pretty good type. Well, whatever you say. Say, I've got an idea. Maybe I can pay you back by typing your homework or a term paper or run errands or something like that. Well, don't worry about it. We'll talk about it at the dance. Nevertheless, I insist on paying you back. As I say, it's a matter of principle. No, okay, but don't worry about it. You know something, Ricky? You're a sweet, charming boy. I like you, and you have a very nice attitude towards things. Oh, thank you. Hey, how did that dent get in my fender? <laughs> now, wait, wait a second. Before you get all excited, I can explain this whole thing. Go ahead, I'm waiting. Well, it, it wasn't my fault. Uh, there was this girl. Ricky, how many times have I told you not to look at girls while you're driving? No, I wasn't driving. You mean you let some girl drive my car? Well, let me tell you what happened. Uh, the car was parked and she backed into it. It was an accident. Did you get her name? Yeah, I know her name. She's a friend of mine. All I can say is I hope she's insured. Oh, I, I wanted to tell you about that. Well, don't tell me she doesn't have any insurance. Oh, well, of course she has. Well, that is, her father has. Well, what's the problem? Well, she doesn't want her father to know she smashed up your fender. She's afraid he won't let her have the car anymore. Go ahead. Well, that's it. But don't worry about it. She'll pay for having it fixed. You mean I'm supposed to take it down to the garage and have them send her the bill? Well, no, it doesn't exactly work out that way. See, she doesn't have any money. Go ahead, I'm listening. Well, so she offered to sort of work off the debt. You know, type up notes for me, help me with my homework, run errands and stuff like that. Well, that's very interesting, but how does that pay for my fender? You mean you don't think that was very nice of her to offer to do something like that? Stop confusing the issue. You borrowed my car and brought it back with a dented fender. You're responsible for any damage that was done to it. Uh, hi, fellas. Uh, hi, hi, Pop. Pop. Holy smokes. Gee, uh, how did you do that, Dave? I didn't do it. Ricky did it. I didn't do it. A girl did it. A girl? What girl? Her name is Kathy Stewart. She backed into the car while it was parked. Oh. Well, do you know her very well? Pretty well. I'm taking her to the dance next Saturday night. Well, uh, did she give you the name of her insurance company? That's where the sad story comes in. <laughs> uh, you mean she's not insured? Well, it's not that. She just doesn't want her father to find out about the accident. So big-hearted Ricky let her off the hook. Will you stop worrying, David? I'll get it fixed. Wait a minute. Kathy Stewart. Wasn't that the girl that broke a date with you a couple of weeks ago because she had an earache? A toothache. What's that got to do with it? Well, I thought you said you weren't going to go out with her anymore. Well, I changed my mind. I was wrong about her. She's a very nice girl. Uh, look, I don't want to get involved in this, but did she agree to go to the dance with you before or after you let her off the hook? Well, before. Sounds like a pretty smart girl to me. Look, David, there's no connection between the two. I told you she even offered to work for me to pay me back. Yeah, and you turned her down. Well, naturally, it'd be very embarrassing for both of us. So I'm stuck with a dead offender. I told you I'd pay you for it. And when you see her at the dance, you'll know it was worth it. If I see her at the dance. What do you mean? That she'll probably call up and say she's got another earache. Toothache. Is it you, Rick? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, do you want to see me about something, Mom? I just wanted to tell you I sent your gray suit to the cleaners. It'll be back in time for the dance next Saturday night. Oh, thanks. How'd you know I was going to have a date? Oh, I just had confidence in you. Who are you going to take? Uh, I don't think you know her. Her name is Kathy Stewart. Did you run into her downtown? Well, not exactly. She ran into me. Uh, that is, not into me, but into David's car. She put a dent in his fender. Oh, boy, that's a shame. Well, it worked out pretty well for me. It gave me a chance to ask her to the dance. Well, that's good. Uh, uh, will you meet her? She's a real cute girl. She's got a lot of character, too. You know what she offered to do? Oh, excuse me, David. Hello? Oh, yes, just a second. It's for you, dear. It's Kathy. Oh, thanks, Mom. Hello? Ricky? Yeah. This is Kathy. I hope you don't mind my calling you. Oh, no, not at all. I've got some bad news. Oh, what sort of bad news? When I got home, I found out that my cousin's going to come in town next weekend. What's the problem? I don't think it's right for me to go to the dance and leave her here alone. Well, then why don't we get a date for her? Well, she's a little young. She doesn't care for dancing. She's uh, more the studious type, if you know what I mean. 
Well, then why don't we get somebody to study with her? Well, I don't think that would really work out. Besides, I'm, I'm getting a cold. Well, don't you think it'll be better by Saturday night? Uh, well, even if it is, I'd forgotten something else. I promised my father that I'd go down to his office on Saturday afternoon and help him with his letters and things. Well, that's just Saturday afternoon. Well, I realize that, but I've helped him before, and usually we don't get through till late. Well, maybe I could come down there and help you. You get through a lot earlier. Well, that's nice of you. But I don't think it would work out. Well, maybe we can make it some other time. I'm awfully sorry. Well, uh, that's okay. So long. <laughs> That was Kathy. Her cousin's coming into town next Saturday. She's getting a cold. She has to help her father with some work on Saturday afternoon, so she's not going to the dance with me. Oh, that's a shame. Sounds pretty phony, if you ask me. Well, no, uh, not necessarily, Dave. Th those things happen, you know, Rick. Well, I think Dave's right. I'll tell you this much, that's the last time I asked her to go anyplace. Well, she could be telling the truth, you know. Well, you, you said what a nice girl she is, how she offered to work for you to pay for the fender. Hey, wait a minute, Pop. That's a great idea. What is? You think she's gonna make a fool out of me? I'll accept her offer. Will somebody fill me in on this? Your younger son has a private secretary, a fetch and carry girl to take my class notes, type up my homework, run errands, carry my books. Boy, I'll run this game ragged. Now, now, sit down, dear. You'll feel better in a minute. Boy, what a pleasure this is gonna be. I can get a cold towel quick. I'll put it on the kid. In a few short weeks, Christmas will be over and the lights and tinsel will be put away for another year. But in many homes, the joy of this Christmas will live forever because mother gave father a brownie movie camera and they captured it all in movies right from the start. And how about you? Why don't you make this a give and take Christmas? Give your family a brownie automatic movie camera so they can take movies that save all the action and color of Christmas. The Brownie automatic movie camera costs $74.50 or as little as $7.50 down. And it's easy to use. Whether you shoot in bright sunlight or in deep shade, your camera sets itself to the right exposure automatically. And to show your movies bright and clear, there's the fine Brownie 500 projector. Why not give your family a Kodak gift and make this the happiest Christmas you'll ever remember? Hi, Kathy. Oh, hi, Rick. What are you doing here? Oh, I come in the library occasionally to read the papers. Oh, well, I didn't mean that. It's just that I didn't expect to see you. Oh, why not? Well, for one thing, I was afraid you might be mad at me or something. Oh, you mean just because you called off the day for Saturday night? Well, yes. Oh, those things happen. Everybody has a right to change his mind once in a while, don't you think? Well, it wasn't exactly a case of changing my mind. Well, whatever it was, I know you must have been telling the truth because you have so much character and integrity. Well, do you really think so? Well, of course. I was telling my mother and father about your offer, and they were tremendously impressed. My offer? Yeah, I told them how you offered to be my personal secretary to pay for the fender you smashed. Oh, they won't tell my mother and father about the fender, will they? Oh, no. In fact, they don't even know your folks. Oh, well, that's good. By the way, my brother checked and it'll cost $25 to get the fender fixed. Mm, who's going to pay for it? Oh, uh, don't worry about that. I had some money saved up, so I paid him. Oh, honestly, Rick, you're the most wonderful boy. So understanding. Please, don't kiss me now. At least not here in the library. <laughs> Well, I wish you'd let me do something about the fender. Well, as a matter of fact, I was just getting around to that. I've been thinking it over, and I've decided it's just plain selfish of me to allow you to carry this feeling of guilt. Oh, please don't worry about that. Oh, but I do. And I want you to know that I've changed my mind. I'm going to accept your offer, and you can start working for me right now until you paid off the entire $25. Isn't that nice? <laughs> oh, sure. Uh, do you have a class next period? No, I don't. Good. I have a chemistry class. You can take notes for me. I'll meet you in front of the science building. Oh, and uh, here's 50 cents. Pick me up a ham sandwich and a Coke on the way. Thus crystallized specimens of sodium chloride and of iron sulfide in their natural shapes are cubical. The forms found in other systems, however, are capable of assuming an infinite diversity of shapes. 
The relative lengthening or shortening in one direction shown by the square prismatic and hexagonal forms uh, makes it possible for each separate substance to adopt proportions which are more or less different from those of every other substance. Excuse me, miss, but have I ever seen you in my class before? Well, no, sir. I didn't think so. I may blow up a test tube now and then, but I never forget a pretty face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Asher, this is Miss Stewart. Is the young lady with you? Yes, sir. Uh, she's taking notes for me. Uh, is there any reason why you can't take your own notes? No, sir. But you see, Miss Stewart backed into my brother's car and dented the fender, and she didn't want to report it to the insurance company because she didn't want her father to find out about it. I see. May we continue? Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> now, let's see. Where was I? makes it possible for each separate substance to adopt proportions which are more or less different from those of every other substance. Thank you. Each substance not belonging to the regular system... report coming. Oh, fine. I'm just about finished. Is there anything else you want done after this? No, I can't think of anything. I hope about that book report for English. Oh, I haven't read the book yet. Well, I have. Don't tempt me. I'll have this done in just a minute. Um, what's that date over there? I can't read it. Uh, 1625. What do you got there? Oh, uh, just some more notes Kathy typed up for me. Uh, don't you think she's paid you back by now? Well, I don't know. She keeps insisting she still owes me money, so who am I to complain? Well, why don't you call one of those secretarial services and find out what they charge for typing? Well, what about running errands and shining shoes and taking notes in class and sewing buttons on your shirt? You mean to say she's been doing all those things? Well, I don't start feeling sorry for her, Mom. Don't forget she's a girl who stood me up for the dance tomorrow night. Okay, I'll call it off. Hello. Hi, uh, I'm Rick Nelson. Oh, hi, Rick. I'm Kathy's mother. Won't you come in? Oh, thank you. Kathy's not home right now, but she left some papers for you. I believe there's some notes for your music appreciation course. Oh, thanks. I hope I haven't been keeping Kathy too busy. Oh, I'm sure you haven't. At least I haven't heard any complaints. Oh, are you sure? Oh, yes, very sure. Oh, and in case you were wondering, I know all about the Dennett Fender. Oh, gee, I, I, Kathy's father doesn't know about it, does he? Well, between you and me, I think he does. Of course, Kathy's not supposed to know that, although I'm sure she does. But her dad's not supposed to know she knows he knows, or he'd have to do something about it. Am I confusing you? Oh, oh no, we have a pretty complicated family, too. Oh, well, that makes it easier. Then. Here, a couple more. Well, uh, tell Kathy thanks, and, and I think this about does it. In fact, I'm sure there's more than pays for the fender. Oh, really? She'll be disappointed. Well, why do you say that? Well, because she won't be seeing you anymore. She has quite a crush on you, you know. I guess I shouldn't be saying that. Gee, that's nice to hear. But if she likes me so much, how come she broke the day with me? Well, didn't she tell you? Well, she said she was getting a cold and she was going to help her father at the office. And her cousin was coming to town. Well, all those things are true. But I don't think that's why she called it off. Gee, I don't understand it. Well, she wants to go with you very much, but... Well, you know how girls are. She wanted to buy a new formal, but we had to put our foot down. She said she'd be the only girl there without a new dress. But after all, she can't have one for every dance. Oh, sure, I understand. Well, at least it's nice to know she wanted to go with me. I was beginning to get a complex. Well, we can't let that happen, can we? Well, thanks, Miss Stewart. Gee, I sure am glad I met you. Thank you, Ricky. I'm sure glad I met you, too. It just goes to show you how badly you can misjudge a girl. Here, I thought she didn't want to go to the dance with me. Well, it wasn't your fault. Well, the worst part of it is, if she'd have been working in an office instead of for me, she'd have made 25 or $30. She could have bought herself a new dress. Well, why does she have to have a new dress? Well, you know how girls are. Well, no, how are they? Well, I don't know. Well, that's what her mother said. All the other girls are getting new dresses. How's homework coming along, fellas? 
Oh, okay, Mom. I was just telling David I, I feel awful about making Kathy work for me all week. Oh, I wouldn't worry about it, dear. After all, she suggested it, and she didn't seem to mind too much. She's probably a spoiled brat, and it did her a lot of good to have somebody tell her where to head in for a change. Cut it out now, David. You're talking about the girl that almost went to the dance with me. Well, besides, it's your fault for lending me the car in the first place. My fault? Yeah, you know how irresponsible I am. <laughs> good night, fellas. Good night, Mom. Hey, Ricky. Ricky. Come on, David, I'm asleep. Well, wake up. Listen to this note I just found. It's from some guy named George Smith. Who's George Smith? The guy who backed into my car. Somebody hit you again? No, he was the guy who did it in the first place. What? Don't you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Kathy wasn't the one that dented my fender. I heard the crash. What you probably heard was Kathy's bumper banging into mine. Evidently, the fender had already been dented, and the guy left a note in my car and drove off. Hey, let me look at that. It's funny, I didn't find this. Well, it slipped down behind the seat. I probably wouldn't have found it either if I hadn't been cleaning out the car. How about this? Well, then he has to pay for the fender. Sure. Hey, do you realize what this means? I owe Kathy $25. Well, yeah, I guess you do. Hey, this is great. It solves the whole problem. I'll pay her what I owe her. She can buy a new dress, and we can go to the dance. Come on, David, give me my money back. What money? Well, the money I gave you to have the fender fixed. Well, I can't. I spent it. I gave it to the garage man. Well, you get it back from the other guy. He wouldn't have left you the note if he didn't intend to pay for it. Mm. Okay. Sure lucky for you I saved my money. Who are you fooling with that lock routine? That's been broken for years. You don't deserve it, but here it is. 10, 20, 25. Oh, thanks, David. Gee, I better get right over there. I hope she's home. Take it easy. You'll last longer. <laughs> Let me tell we did. This is a wonderful dance. I'm so glad I could make it. Oh, so am I. That's a beautiful dress. Thank you. I ought to work for you every week. I'd be the best dressed girl in school. Yeah, if my brother's money held out. And what's he got to do with it? Well, it's too complicated to worry about now. Oh, uh, speaking of my brother, may I cut in, please? Well, how can I turn you down? You may discontinue my credit. <laughs> Don't tempt me. There we are. Thank you, dear. Hi, Pop. Hi, Mom. Oh, hi, Rick. Hi, Rick. Can I cut in? Oh, gee, it took me about 10 minutes to get this. Oh, no. Yeah, can I dance with Mom? Oh, yeah, go ahead. I'd love to. Here, Mom, I'll take that off your hands. Figures. <laughs> okay, Mom, we're alone now. You can tell me the truth. About what? Oh, about the note. What note? The note David found in his car. You know, the one signed George Jones. A uh, George Smith. Oh, do you know him? No, I don't believe so. Why? Well, you ought to. His handwriting's exactly like yours. How long have you known? Well, since this afternoon, when I took a good look at the note. Oh, boy, I must be slipping. I thought I disguised my handwriting better than that. Did David recognize it? Gee, I don't know. He hasn't said anything. Well, look who's here. Oh, hi. Oh, uh, uh, Kathy, this is my mother. This is Kathy Stewart. Hello, hi, Kathy. Do? Thanks for the dance, Kathy. Thank you, Dave. Shall we, Mom? Love to. This is a big night for me. Okay, Mom. You might as well confess. What are you talking about? The note. Oh, enjoying the dance? Come on now, I know you wrote it. Oh, that's the trouble of having two smart sons. You can't get away with anything. Don't forget, we've seen your signature on a lot of report cards through the years. Well, I just wanted to make sure that Rick and Kathy didn't miss the dance. Oh, wait a minute, I just thought of something. If there's no George Smith, who's going to pay me back for my fender? Uh, may I cut in again? Uh, no, but you're just in time. I want to talk to you. Where's Kathy? Oh, don't worry about her. She's having a good time. Is she dancing? Oh, yeah. Uh, some elderly gentleman cut in on us. Said his wife had deserted. I think I know the gentleman you're referring to. Uh, they're right over there. <laughs> are you going to cut in on them? Are you kidding? My feet are killing me. I'm going to sit down. <laughs> Did you say you want to talk to me about something? I sure do. Now that we all know about the note, I just wanted to remind you that you still owe me $25. Oh, I'll pay you back. Of course, I don't happen to have it right now, but in a couple of well, weeks... that's all right. Don't worry about it. Well, what do you mean, don't worry about it? Well, let's see. You can start out by typing my class notes, taking some dictation, washing... <laughs> Now, 
next week's adventure will be brought to you by our alternate sponsor, the Quaker Oats Company. Now, a word about one of their many fine products, Aunt Jemima Pancake Mix. Mmm, Aunt Jemima's. So tender, so light. There's something about Aunt Jemima's. Peg, these are terrific. What's the secret? Oh, it's an old family secret, handed down from generation to generation, <laughs> from father to son. By Aunt Jemima. <laughs> the secret is out. Well, I ought to know Aunt Jemima. I was raised on them. Say, and I love the way the sausage is right in the pancake. Isn't it good? And it's so easy. Yes, yeah, simple and delicious. Just try pieces of bulk pork sausage, shake up a batch of Aunt Jemima's, then pour the batter on the griddle, and sprinkle with drained sausage meat. You know, more people have flipped over Aunt Jemima's than any other pancakes in the world. Light, tender, Aunt Jemima's. If you like pancakes, then sure as shaken, they're Aunt Jemima's. are brought to you on film by Eastman Kodak Company, who also present the Ed Sullivan Show on another network. And remember, Kodak suggests you make this a give and take Christmas. Give a Kodak gift and take pictures you'll treasure for years to come. Be sure and see David in his latest motion picture. It's called 30, and he co-stars with Jack Webb. Of course, I may be prejudiced, but I think he does a wonderful job. And speaking of the boys, I hope you have Ricky's new album. We think it's his best yet. It's called Songs by Ricky. This has been an ABC Television Network film presentation.